We'll be right back. And now, the return of the Bonehead Detectives. All right, we're back trying to solve the mystery. Who killed the dinos? Last time we saw our buddy Kirk, he was putting in some overtime on his fossil dick. Now, dino bones aren't the only fossils in the Badlands. They're just the sexiest, at least according to Kirk. The dinosaurs are sexy, there's no question about that, but they're quite rare, and they're a lot of work. So what does Kirk look for in a fossil? Well, some of his favorites are fossil leaves. Fossil leaves? Wait, leaves leave fossils? <sighs> fossil leaves tell you a real different story. They give you the context. I mean, if you look at the world today, it's a green planet, and plants cover the surface of the Earth. Plants are living in environments and responding to them, so you can learn quite a bit from the world from looking at the plants. So looking at the fossil plants really gives you a window into the late Cretaceous world that is more informative than just looking at the animals. Hey, looks like Kirk might have found a fossil leaf right here. He may actually have more than one, Sammy. Sometimes he finds fossil remains of a lot of different plants in a single rock. Hey, you were right. But what clues did the fossil leaves leave? Are we getting any closer to catching our killer? Kirk thinks so, because these leaves tell him what the environment was like back then. And they tell us a tremendous amount about what the environment was when Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops wandered around in western North Dakota. You look at this leaf, for instance, it's got a smooth margin, an elongate pointed tip, and that's the kind of leaf you find today in tropical rainforests, areas that have a lot of rainfall and ample temperatures. They don't get too cold in the winter, and there's always water around. It's really different than what it is here today. Now it's a desert or a high plains. 66 million years ago, this was probably a broken uh, subtropical forest. So the fossil leaves tell us about the climate back then, but it changed fast, when about 80% of the plants in the area suddenly died out. And guess when that was? That's right, good guess. Around the same time the dinos went extinct. Coincidence? Kirk doesn't think so, and he says the proof is right here, in a layer of clay filled with gobs of iridium. What on earth is iridium, you ask? To answer that, let's go to outer space. See, iridium is an element that's found mostly in things like meteorites and asteroids, hardly ever on Earth. And you can find that layer of iridium clay all over the world. Now, how could it possibly have gotten there? Well, here's one way. Incoming! Not a pretty picture. But if an asteroid over six miles wide that weighed about a trillion tons crashed into the Earth, this would have been the scene. Gnarly! A layer of iridium dust from the exploded asteroid would have covered the entire Earth. It would have been Mother Nature's reign of terror. And not just rain. There would have been awesome explosions, insane fires, beast and volcanoes, butt-kicking tidal waves. You name it, it would have gone down. And all the dinosaurs would have gone down, too. It would have been the biggest freak accident in the history of the world. The bonehead Kirk's a believer. I'm fully convinced that there was a major biologic catastrophe at the end of the Cretaceous, and that catastrophe is precisely timed with physical evidence for an asteroid impact. So I think an asteroid was the culprit. So there you have theory number one, which we here at Bonehead Detectives like to call the asteroid theory. Yeah? Well, a mystery as big as extinction isn't going to be that easy to solve. And there's a certain Cretaceous cowboy who has his own theory. Would that be Dr. Bob Bakker? You got it. There is a theory very popular with journalists and geophysicists that a meteorite, the giant mailed fist of God from the heavens, smacked the Earth at the end of the Cretaceous, sent out a huge dust cloud which blotted out the sun, sent down acid rain, killed all the dinosaurs. Well, that's bunk. A meteorite may well have hit the Earth roughly when the dinosaurs went extinct, but it was a cosmic backfire. The dinosaurs were already suffering pulses of extinction, already been going on for six million years. And if a meteorite big enough to kill dinosaurs smacked the Earth, it would exterminate all those poor tropical toads and turtles and frogs. Nothing is more delicate than a tropical turtle. It can't stand any sudden change of temperature. So if you smack the Earth today with a gigantic meteorite, as the theory suggested, and send out a huge dust cloud and chill the earth and send down acid rain, who's going to die first? 20,000 pound dinosaur or one pound little pond turtle? Well, the turtle's going to die first. 
Well, the turtles didn't die. There's no extinction of turtles at the end of the Cretaceous. So ask not why the dinosaurs died. Better ask why did the turtles live? Excellent question, Dr. Bob. All through the Mesozoic, lots of dinosaurs appeared and then went extinct, not just at the end. It's the same pattern again and again and again and again. What we're looking for is a serial killer, a Darwinian serial killer who strikes land and ocean every 10 or 15 or 20 million years and hits exactly the same way. And the serial killer has a extremely refined victim profile. It's always the same animals in the ecosystem who are hit. It's always the same animals who are left alone. Well, that's both frightening and intriguing. Ah, frightening and intriguing, sort of like aliens. Maybe aliens kill off the dinosaur lovers. Anything's possible, Sam, but I'll bet Dr. Bob's got an even better theory on who our killer is. You'll have to stick around to find out. Don't go away. We'll be right back.